Hello, this is Riding With Re, and today's video has been very much requested. We are, of course, talking about the Pivo Pod Silver. This is the limited edition Pivo Pod, and we're gonna be discussing how you can use it to film your equestrian videos and film your horse riding. bought the Pivo Pod Red a few months ago and I've been sharing the unboxing and the setup of that as well as continual videos of me using the Pivo in my horse riding on my Instagram using the hashtag Pivo riding with Re and you guys have been really enjoying it asking me lots of questions and I can see that it's something that a lot of you are interested in. So actually Pivo got in touch with me a little while ago and have sent me very kindly the Pivo Pod Silver along with a GoPro action mount and the Pivo tripod, which I'm actually using right now. So today we're gonna to be unboxing all of that. I'm gonna be talking you through what comes in the box with the Pivo Silver, how I set it up for my horse riding. This is great if you ride by yourself. There are super easy ways to do it and how to get the most successful the most successful footage. There is a video coming up where I specifically compare the Pivo Pod Red and the Pivo Pod Silver, show you different pieces of footage for horse riding, and then you can make the decision about which one is better for horse riding. So do subscribe if you wanna see that video. It is coming up, but today it's all about the Pivo Pod Silver. If you enjoyed today's video, do give it a thumbs up. Leave me any questions or comments below. A lot of you have been asking questions about the Pivo and giving um, updated ideas about what kind of features you wanna see. The Pivo team would love to hear those, and I'm very, very very lucky that I'm able to send those over to the team. So if you do have questions or things that you really would love this pod to do, do pop them below and I'll be sure to pass those on to the Pivo team. All right, let's get into it. Let's unbox the Pivo Pod Silver. So it comes in a box like this, a little bit similar to an iPhone box and it's covered in plastic. I've taken the plastic off just in the interest of time and it's gonna open the same way that you would open an iPhone box. So you pull up from the top, just like that. And once you open it up, you're gonna see this. This is what you're gonna see when you open the box. So the Pivo actually comes in this little case and you just need to give it a little wiggle to pull it out. And this is what it looks like. So if you've never seen a Pivo before, this piece here where my finger is, is where your phone will sit. This dial here is gonna move the clamp closer or further away from your phone. And then this piece is what makes it move around. The on button is here. The charging button is here. That is the Pivo pod. Visually, the main difference between the silver and the red, I'll just show you is the band. So this is obviously a little bit dustier because I've had it for longer and I use it all the time, but this has a red band and this has a silver band. So if you did have both, this is how you would tell them apart. So let's go into the rest of the box. Below this, you're actually gonna see these two pieces. One of them is a box with your remote control in. So let's just open that up and have a look. This is really useful if you wanna start the camera when you're not right next to it. It's really useful for some of the quick create modes. Um, and it's good if when you're horse riding, you don't wanna start until a certain point or you want to stop and start a bit. So this back, this actually remote looks like this and it comes with batteries. That's what it looks like. So it's really small, it fits in your pocket, which is ideal if you're horse riding because I think we all know that jods and riding tights are pocket space is at a premium, right? So that is your first box. And your second box is just your charging lead. So I showed you where the charging cable plugs into the Pivo before, but I'll just show you now. It comes with that plastic, so I'll just pull that off. And then if you take the Pivo, one end is a USB port, the other plugs in to your Pivo, just like that. And then this is gonna plug into your normal plug and you're good. It actually is pretty quick to charge. I will check the exact time and pop it here on the screen, but I found that it mostly charges in an hour or so. And I've also had people asking whether it's fully charged when it arrives. It is, it will turn on and you'll see that it's on because it has this blue light and it will make a little sound. And then you'll hear it make a sound when it turns off as well. There, you'll see that there's sort of a screw in the bottom of this. And this is if you have it on a tripod to mount, it will screw into a tripod. It's a pretty standard screw. And then finally, you'll just have your manual. 
and that's going to tell you everything that you need to know to get started with the pivot so that is the box all right let's get on to the setup of the pivot pod silver if you would like to take a look at the pivot pod silver or the pivot pod red as we are talking there is a link in the description it is an affiliate link which means it doesn't cost you any extra to shop through it but it does help support me as a creator all right, we're down in the school. I have my Pivo Pod Silver, I have my tripod, I have Ted, of course, and we have the jumps that we'll be using today. Let's set up this tripod together and I'll talk you through it step by step. Just sliding in with a voice over here. My audio wasn't great here and I want you guys to be able to hear what I was saying. This tripod is super simple to set up. All you need to do is pull those legs back and then when you try and push against them again, you'll feel them sort of click and you'll have some resistance. That is the first part of setting it up. You'll need to pull back on this little tag if you want them to go back into place, but we're gonna pull these out because we're using them today and we can always adjust them afterwards. Pull those three out, turn it back round, and then you'll see you have three sort of buttons here you're going to pull these three all out and this is going to enable your tripod to go taller. Once you have it at the height you're happy with, close those back up and then you'll see that your Pivo, and this is for the Pivo pod red and the silver, has this hole at the bottom, okay? You're going to screw that onto the top of your tripod, make sure it's secure and that is you ready to go. If anything's a little bit wonky, which you'll be able to see from the green level here on your on your Pivo, you can adjust the legs accordingly, but this looks good to me. So let's move on to setting up the Pivo Pod app and I'll show you how I do it when I ride by myself. Just a little close up here of the finished tripod with the Pivo on top and then the three clips that you'll use to adjust the height of the tripod. You're gonna unscrew the top part of your Pivo here. <laughs> And then there's another screw on here and a screw in the bottom of your GoPro mount. And then we're gonna just screw that back on there like this. Your phone's gonna sit in here and your GoPro is gonna sit on here. So it's gonna screw in as normal with your GoPro hardware. So make sure that you have a case for your GoPro. You probably use one already for your head cam or your body harness. That is gonna screw straight into there and then you're good to go. So now that our tripod is set up, we're gonna switch our Pivo on. You'll see the blue light and you'll hear a noise when it's on. Okay, this is how I set up my Pivo pod when I'm riding alone. You're gonna position your horse a few feet in front of the tripod like this. Don't worry if they won't stand by themselves. I'll show you another method if you ride by yourself. Then you're gonna put your phone into the Pivo, tighten it up and make sure it's straight. And then you're gonna click into the Pivo app. It's gonna look like this and you're gonna press connect. If it's your first time using the Pivo, you're gonna pop up with this message that says new Pivo, you're gonna click save, then the camera's gonna pop up. I'm switching the camera because I want it facing Ted. And then you're gonna drag the screen down so that you get all of your options. Make sure your auto tracking is on AI, your on-screen position is centered. And if you're using the silver, you'll see a tracking speed that says frenzy. Click that on because it's gonna track you even faster than the red can. If you're using a red, you just want it on fast. And make sure you also toggle on predictive follow because this means if you go out of frame the pivo will try and find you again which is very useful for horse riding and finally we're going to drag down until we get to horse on the right hand side once you see that red square and they've locked onto your horse you can press record and you're good to go if your horse doesn't stand still by themselves, that is fine. You're just gonna use the selfie camera. When you do press the horse icon and it has that red square come up, try and take a step to the side so that it can just lock onto your horse and then you're good to go with exactly the same settings as before. Worth noting that when you use the selfie camera on an iPhone, your quality of video is gonna be lower than if you use the other camera. Now onto the fun bit, the footage captured with the Pivo Pod Silver. This is a little jump session I did, so I'm gonna show you our warm up, walk, trot, canter, all three gates, and then we're gonna see how it stacks up when I'm actually jumping. The Pivo Pod Silver is supposed to be twice as fast as the red, so it should have no trouble keeping up with me. I wanted to show you here the walk, trot, canter, which it has no trouble with, as you can see, even at the far away ranges of the edges of the school. I also wanted to show you me going past the colored fences because I have heard of some people having issues of Pivo tracking them past coloured objects. I personally haven't had this issue myself as you can see. However, Pivo does mention that it's best if you have a plain-ish background and distinct colours. So Ted is wearing a blue lumna and I'm lucky that the school has a pretty plain background so it is finding it easy to track and we are sort of tracking to Pivo's guidelines. But how does it actually stack up when we're jumping? Let's take a look. So 
So not perfect jumping technique there from Ted and I. We're still learning as a partnership. But as you can see, the Pivo had no trouble keeping up with us. When we're in a nice shot like that, it's really got no issue. But for me personally, Ted gets faster and faster as the session goes on. He just gets more excited. And that is really where I'm interested to see if the Pivo can track is towards the end of the session when we're really moving at pace. So let's see. So as the session goes on and our pace picks up, the Pivo is having trouble keeping up with me. It's not having trouble tracking me. It knows exactly where I am. It's just that the pace is quite fast. And if you remember at the start of the session, I set it to track me in the center of the screen. I wanted to try out a theory of putting myself in the far left of the screen and seeing if that just gives me a little more runway to get the fence in if I do pick up pace in a short space of time, like the approach to a fence. That was much better. As I approached the fence, I obviously sped up too quickly for the Pivo to make a change. And by having myself on the far left of the screen, it was able to almost catch up with me. So I'd recommend doing this, but it would mean that you would need to change which side of the screen you need to track on, depending on which rain you are on, if that makes sense. So if you're coming in on the right rain, you need to be on the far left of the screen. If you're coming in on the left rain, you need to be on the far right of the screen. This is what happens if you keep it tracking at the far left of the screen. If you ride in on the left rein you're going to miss the fence because it's almost too far in front and of course this only applies if you're riding at particularly fast speeds like i was at the end of that session if you are riding at a steady canter or even a trot like i was at the start of this session you are going to have absolutely no trouble with being in the center of the tracking with the pivo pod silver and just to show you a reference for where my pivo pod and tripod are set up in the school they are bang in the center of the school and they're sort of angled so that you get the approach of fence one and then you get a sideways view of fence two now, as with the Pivo Pod Red, this is not a perfect solution. It does lose you occasionally. So this is what it looks like if it loses you and you don't have that predictive follow setting that we talked about turned on. It will just wait for you to come back into frame or movement to come back into frame and then pick you back up. It's a lot easier for your session if you can twitch on that predictive follow and then this is what happens. It will start looking for you. You can just jump back into the frame, cut in front of your camera and it will pick you up again. What I would say is that the silver lost me significantly less than the Pivo Pod red and it is the cheapest option or at least one of the cheapest options on the market for this kind of tracking the others are in the hundreds of pounds so i personally am willing to put up with it losing me a little bit in order to have this kind of coverage but it's completely a personal choice so there you have it that is the pivo pod silver we went through an unboxing an app setup and you saw it there in flat work and jumping if you do want to check it out it's in the link in the description and next week i'm going to be showing you the difference between the pivo pod silver and the pivo pod red we'll be setting those up together and i'll be showing you the difference in the hardware in the software and showing you clips of the footage so you can decide which one is best for your horse riding i know that that is a question that comes up a lot so do subscribe if you don't want to miss that video see you next time Good boy, I feel so clever.